Hey, how's everybody doing today? It's Matt, and welcome to this late night scape, late evening scape here. Uh, it's kind of late evening. It's about 7, 8 o'clock at night here in New York. And I figured I'd come on and talk to you about a few topics that have kind of been striking a nerve uh, with me over the past few days. I've been seeing a lot of comments, a lot of PMs, lots of things, uh, lots of suggestions that you guys have been putting forth and ideas for content as well as uh, some sensitive topics that you guys have been talking about and a lot of other people have been talking about for weeks on end. Um, but anyway, uh, going to be getting 60 mining in this clip, so uh, going to be focusing hard to get this mining level over the next 20 minutes, but I hope you can take a listen to some of the topics that I kind of wanted to talk about. Um, so 60 mining actually is the last skill requirement I need for questing to become a Zerk. I got 66 cooking yesterday at the Rogue's Den. Thank you all for coming out. Whoever was in my French chat, I kind of let you guys know that I was at the Rogue's Den. Um, it's kind of late at night, so not that many of you were online. Uh, but uh, glad to see some of you guys came out and watched me do some cooking, and glad you could take part in some cooking at the Rogue's Den. It was pretty chillax, uh, not too bad. Uh, and kind of got through the cooking pretty fast. You know, lobsters are about 120k experience per hour. So once you hit around 55 cooking, you don't burn too many of them. So 55 to 66, you kind of do that in about an hour, an hour and a half. Maybe it might have been closer to two hours, but it was still pretty quick. But anyway, only got about 15 minutes left into this mining level, and then we'll be 60. And I gotta say, mining is a little bit more intense. So I, if, I, if I were you, I'd recommend listening to some music, listening to a radio, or listening to something while you do mining. Um, but anyway, I'm getting through the last 20 minutes by rambling. Here we go. Okay, so uh, when I become a Zerker, I um, really want to do something for 30 days straight. And, you know, I don't want it to all be the same thing. I don't want it to be a commentary uh, marathon. I, I kind of want it to be something, a combination of many different PKing things. You know, I want to do montages. I want to do commentaries. And I might even want to do a few PKing events with you guys while I do this 30-day marathon. Um, I know that's going to be tough to do, but I, I do want to do some unique things over a 30-day span as soon as I'm done with school. you know. And once I become a Zerker, I'm going to have a lot of time. It's actually coinciding with when I'm done with school. It's really great. I'm going to be a Zerker and I'm going to be off from school. So I'm going to have a lot of time on my hands to make videos for you guys. And um, you know, a couple of the ideas that have been springing up of Matt, come on, do some PKing events with us. And I've been like, absolutely, I really want to do this. And also do do multiple commentaries over multiple days and do montage and do lots of videos. Bring back rags to riches. You know, these are all ideas and these are all things that I plan on doing. Uh, but for 30 days straight, I do want to do something. And I want to do many different things over 30 days. All PKing related and all different types of activities. Both with you guys and, you know, commentary, single edge PKing, even maybe... GDK peaking in the sense that I'm looking for people to kill that are killing other G, uh, GDK killers and find some other stuff out there and do some team peaking, maybe do duos with other people and also do team peaking with you guys. So it's a bunch of different activities over a 30 day span and I think it's going to be really something that you guys are going to enjoy um, and look forward to and I hope you do. Uh, but I'd like to know what you guys think about that. What other ideas could I bring into the mix over 30 days? And I'm not sure when it's going to begin. I just know it's going to begin when I become a Zerk and when I'm a perfect Zerk, when I'm ready to go, when I got the Vengeance, when I got everything, got the uh, the nice uh, torso and the fire cape and all that. That's when I would do my marathon and do my 30-day PKing endeavor, adventure with you guys and with other different types of things. But anyway, I would like to know some of your ideas down below so you can leave a comment uh, and I will be reading them all. So... That's uh, the first topic. And another thing I really wanted to talk about was 94 Mage. And I saw a method the other day, and I knew the method was out there, but I really saw it being utilized in a way that was really, really cool. And that was stun elking at ogres while actually doing some ranged. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to be that coordinated enough to do range with a, hand, with a cannon and, and, and everything, nor do I really have the funds to do that. Actually, I've been merchanting really, really hard to try and come up with the funds for 94 Mage, and I'm getting there, you know, I'm getting closer, but it's going to be a lot of gold, and merchanting is not too bad on my part, but at the same time, I was contemplating, should I alk, should I burst? Then I saw stun alking, and stun alking is slightly less expensive than bursting, so I think 
I'm going to go with Stun Alking um, as, my, as my method to go from 85 to 94 Mage. And it's only going to take maybe 2-3 to three days to do because it's really, really effective. I've heard it's between 150 and 200k experience per hour depending on how fast you do it and how efficient you are with game ticks. So I'm probably going to go hard uh, either this weekend or early next week to get 94 Mage if I can come up with the funds for that. So I'm going to be working hard on that. And I'm going to get 94 Mage before I become a Zerker because I really want to, you know, be a completed Zerk. I want to have Vengeance, I want to have the Torso, the Fire Cape when I'm a Zerker. You know, I may not have the strength levels right away, but I do want to have all the little fixtures that a Zerker has, especially, you know, the Torso, the Fire Cape, and Vengeance. Those are the three things I need. And, you know, after that, I can start. You know, doing Slayer, and Slayer will naturally get me strength levels, and um, it'll be really, really good, because that that's when I can start doing entertaining streams for you guys, and start really engaging with you. The method itself, the Stun Alking method, is actually, I'm going to give it credits to, to Sun, S-O-N, uh, because I saw him do it on a stream, and it kind of got me thinking about, you know, efficiency and getting through the mage levels pretty quickly, instead of, you know, putting in 60 or 70 or 80,000 more Alks, that would have been really brutal to do. But anyway, yeah, I, the re another real reason why I want to get 94 Mage is because, or as a pure, is because I actually want to do some Ice Barrage PKing as a pure. And, you know, a couple of you guys were asking me to do some anti-rushing videos. And I know that there is some sensitivity around that, considering I do have a history. I did make two videos back about six or seven or eight months ago of me rushing as a uh, you know initiate or turmoil pure I was a turmoil pure and I did do some rushing for two videos it was just two videos and I ended up giving a lot of the stuff back that I PK'd for those two videos to the people that I did kill uh, but you know I did have a history of rushing for two videos and um, I figured anti-rushing would be an equalizer and also I kinda I kinda wanna set an example even though I'm not really the person to I guess set the example, I kind of want to set an example for the wilderness um, in that rushing is not okay, especially in the pure community. It's it's kind of sad that there's just ample rushing and PJing galore everywhere and that peers really can't PK in general. Now I know that a lot of people hate the pure community, and you know what, that's perfectly understandable, but um, I figured before I become a Zerker, I'd do some anti-rushing for you guys, considering it does make for an entertaining video and also you guys have been asking for it. so. I will do it and I will deliver and um, you know if it's something that you don't want to see then just just don't watch it I mean it's no one's forcing you if you see anti-rushing in the title and you don't want to see me anti-rush there's no there's no need to watch the video because you're just wasting your time but anyway moving on from mage the next topic I did want to talk about is Valley Park because there's been two different thought processes going on about Valley Park and I hope to you know, equalize the situation here and kind of offer a compromise solution that's actually going to help both parties. Here are the problems with trading in Varrock West, first off. And I'm not saying that... Well, I'm going to give the positives and the negatives of Varrock West. The positives of Varrock West trading system and trading at Varrock West is that it's very convenient. You pop a Varrock Teletab, you walk two steps, and you're at the trading spot. Very convenient, not too difficult and you can get your stuff. That's really the only positive I see. It's very convenient. You can get there as a low level and it really doesn't require too much of an effort. It only requires 25 mage to, to teleport there. Not too terrible. The problems with Varrock West are that it's really condensed and a lot of the trading areas are very 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 close tied together and they're very they're they're overlapping a lot of the areas are overlapping the treasure trail area is overlapping with the barrows area which is overlapping with the rares and, and the treasure trail items again the upper level treasure trail items and also the rune armor and the rune weapon the dragon weapons and and the obi it's all clunked together there you know the potions and the food and and the runes are kind of all you know in their own area and that's perfectly good it's it, that's stationary but there's a lot of areas overlapping. It's very condensed. Not easy to merch if you're trying to merge and make money. It's not easy to find things. There's a lot of other items that people would normally be selling uh, in a more larger area, more broad area, um, if it existed. And it's not not traded. They're not trading there. So that's that's the biggest problem I see. Now, 
I don't want to take away, and I don't think anybody really wants to take away the convenience of people who like to trade at Varrock West. Okay, and I don't see that having to happen. I don't think people have to physically move from Varrock West to Fally Park. What I think needs to happen is that there needs to be a movement, and I think we're planning on I think a lot of the video makers are doing it. We're going to be doing it in the next week or two. Um, and if it fails, it fails. But we're not trying to move people from Varrock West to Fally Park. We're technically trying to create a new trading spot at Fally Park. Okay? When you create a new trading spot, you have a choice. You can either trade at Fally Park or you can trade at Varrock West. Because Varrock West actually has multiple worlds where people are trading at Varrock West. There's people trading at Varrock West in pretty much every populated world. World 2, World 1, World 5, World 9, uh, World th uh, 30. Everywhere that it's highly populated, more than 1,500 players, there are people trading at Varrock West. So to take one of those worlds, or to take 2,000 people, and create Fally Park again, is actually going to be a good thing, you know? And create this trading spot. You know, it's not technically destroying a trading spot, it's technically just creating a new trading spot. And I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, considering we're not moving people, we're technically creating a new trading spot, not diminishing Varrock West at all. If people want to move from Varrock West to Fally Park due to convenience, due to merchanting, that's their own choice. We're not saying we got to move from Varrock West to Fally Park because that's just something that it's political, I guess you could say. They're game politics. It's kind of a political thing. That's what I found. It's everything, everything that is voted upon or everything that's done is very political. It's a very political game. You know, we have choices to do. We have choices to make now. Um, to ensure the integrity of the game. You know, I'm taking more words from how uh, Jagex likes to put it. Ensure the integrity of old school. That's what they, they want to say. Um, and they're kind of taking our words because we really want game integrity as well. We want the game to survive. We don't want the game to die. Um, but at the same time, I think that this is doable. I think it's plausible. And I don't think it's really going to hurt too many people um, considering the way that, you know, I'm kind of envisioning of it being handled, you know. And what Valley Park will bring, the new trade district would bring... Uh, a much more broader area. There could be organized locations where you know that this corner is for rares, this corner is for this, this corner is for that, this corner is for this, this corner is for that. And you'll know exactly where to, to, uh, to trade items. And the great news about that is if you played back in 07 or back in 06 when this kind of system and this kind of location existed, some sort of an auction house or a grand exchange did not need to exist because you knew exactly where to buy items. You know, in Varrock West, you kind of know where to buy an item, but it's all clunked together and things are overlapping and not that many people are selling things and it's just kind of, it kind of gets messy, you know. Um, I genuinely think that having Fally Park will kind of ease the pain that people, you know, the, ease, the, ease the, the idea of a grand exchange because I know a lot of people are like, uh, we need a grand exchange, you know, and we had the grand exchange in 08 and 09, 2010, you know, and we're new school, we're not old school, but we want to have this old school experience, but we also want the grand exchange. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out the negative impacts the grand exchange had on the live game and the negative impacts it continues to have on the live game and to know that you don't want to repeat that, you know. So this is kind of a compromise. It's not destroying Varric West. It's not going to uh, inhibit on a player's game experience. It's only going to create a new trade spot, and it's kind of going to kind of supplement the whole Grand Exchange hysteria, you know? Before I get to the final topic, this is kind of a segue from Valley Park. As much as we want the game to stay the way it is, you know, stay the way it is, it's got to stay as close to what we want it to be and not change that much. There's going to come a point where people get bored of old school. And I don't know when that's going to be. It could be a year from now. It could be two years from now. It could be five years from now. It could be tomorrow. Who knows? People start getting bored of what's there. You know, that's why we're voting for things like rares. There's probably going to be a vote for the God Wars dungeon. There's going to be a vote for other things. You know, little things that need to be voted upon. You know, some of these things are probably going to get through. You know, and it's going to probably upset a lot of people. And it's going to make a lot of people happy. But at the same time, you have to always, you know, if you want a game to be thriving, meaning you'll have a lot of players in it, there has to be compromise and also integrity. And if there's compromise and people enjoy 
the experience and they're seeing the game evolve to the way that they want because they're voting on it. And also, people are being, or people are enjoying the game experience in general because it's just the game they want to play. It's going to work out for everybody, um, and it's going to keep the game healthy. Whether some people quit and some people join, it's still going to be healthy. It's going to be out with the old, in with the new, um, and there will be a cycle. That's what it's always been. That's what RuneScape's always been. People quit, people join. It's kind of what is what's happened. I'm going to save the whole RuneScape three talk for another type of style video like this. If you want to see another video like this where I skill or where I train or where I do something. I'm fleeing from another one of these evil chickens. Um, I'd like to save the RuneScape 3 talk for some for another day. Anyway, the final topic I wanted to talk about today is botting. And I know it's a cliche topic and everybody likes to, oh yeah, botting, oh yeah, yeah, it's always a problem in RuneScape. Botting is definitely fixable. You know, it is something that can be done on a manual scale, and I see Jagex starting to do that with their bot busting events and their bot busting weekends. Now, making these bot busting events public, not really that great because they're just going to say, okay, well, on this date, there's going to be a bot bust. So then there'll be less bots that day because if you're an intelligent individual and you're botting, you're not going to bot on the day that they're bot busting. Your account's going to get banned, and that's what's going to happen, you know? I do like what they're doing, where they're engaging the community and having these bot busting events. Like we're all going out and we're going to go ban the bots today. I like that. It's kind of cool because you got you know players, you know, taking the initiative and helping out J mods ban bots. It's pretty cool. It's a nice idea. I think they should do those very often, very frequent, and um, I think it could alleviate the bot situation. They could also, and this is only a theory, and it would have to be really, really refined, and it would have to be something that would have to be really thought out, but it's something that could be done because anything's possible in this world because we've evolved as a situ as a civilization, you know, with technology and things like that. I think there is a way that we can come up with a compromise in which players in game can report in a way that things automatically get done. When five people report a bot, that bot gets banned. Now, I could see already that could be heavily abused. If you have a clan leader that you hate, you get all your clan members to to, to report him for botting, and then he's bot banned instantly. But the key is, I think, that if an account is brand spanking new, brand spanking new, or it's been created in the last month, you're a new player. And if five people report you for botting, chances are you're botting. And one other thing that Jagex can do with this, this reporting system is actually when five people report somebody or ten people report one bot, that that actual request gets bumped up. If an account gets reported ten times, that request should actually get put up in a queue. So you have a queue and you see, ah, okay, the reports came in, okay, and these people are, are getting reported the most. So they're probably doing something wrong and you can investigate quickly. You know, Somebody who's reported once or twice could just be hated on. But if, if 10 or 20 people report some bot, you know, if botting clans, I mean clans that actually went out and hunted bots did something like this where they were actually legitimate people, credible people, and certain individuals, their report requests are actually genuine. You know, if Jagex had a ranking system, there could be something set up where there could be like a rank, you know, you're a, you're a, you're reporting bots and you are getting a rank for it, you know, you're helping the game survive, you're helping Jagex do their jobs better, because in the grand scheme of things, there are thousands of bots, there are thousands of them, and to man manually ban them all, it's almost impossible. Anyway guys, that's enough for the rambling for now. I'd love to pick up this conversation on a live stream or another future video like this if you like it, um, but I'm a couple of hours away from the 60 mining, the requirement for lunar diplomacy. Uh, it was pretty pretty long to get this uh, goal, and there we got it, 60 mining. Um, so now we're good. All the skill requirements are done for Zerker status. I am really happy about that. Now all I gotta do is get on the mage bandwagon. As you guys can see, I am 60 mining, 66 cooking, 55 wood cutting, uh, I got 61 crafting, uh, I got the herb lore requirements, and uh, I'm good to go guys. I am really locked and loaded and ready to go for these quests. And I'll quickly show you my quest points. I am at 158 quest points, all the calculations are in place, and I will be at at least 176 if not 177 quest points when I am done. Zerker status completed, Barrow's Gloves, 
Lunar Diplomacy done, Vengeance, I will be solid and ready to go. So all that's stopping me from doing the quests right now is actually to get 94 Mage, then I'm going to do some pure PK, and we'll move on from there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video today. It was kind of a rambling of some sorts, but uh, if you like this style of video, um, coming all, the, all from the top of my head, it's a kind of philosophy and talks that I'm kind of thinking of. Uh, but uh, I'd love to get your opinions on these things and also have the conversation down below because I do read your feedback really I do and I start taking that feedback and I try to Incorporate it with some of the philosophies and see if it works and see if we can come up with even a better solution because you know something that I talk about may not be The best solution, you know, it could be just one of 500 solutions um, but anyway uh, in the end uh, there's got to be compromise with everything, whether you, you be voting on something like Rares or the God Wars Dungeon or uh, with regards to bots and Valley Park and other things like that. So we'll have to figure things out, guys. Uh, we're a team. We can do it. And I'd love to hear from you down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Talk to you all soon. Going to get on that mage. Have a good one, guys. And peace out.